there you go everybody's happy when we come to sabbath <laughs> i know we are tired but we're going to rest at the feet of jesus tonight uh, listening and contemplating his face and because of that i'm, I'm going to ask you to kneel with me Precious Father in heaven, um, we don't know how to express our love for you, but Lord, we thank you for the Sabbath day, for your protection, for bringing us all the way here for life, for so many things that we take for granted. And now I ask that you be our guest of honor this tonight, and also you protect our brethren that are arriving and those who stay home for another reason too. To. Lord, prepare our hearts to receive you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Some of you that are sitting close to me will notice that my left eye is very bloodshot. So I had a little accident, but I'll be okay, so don't fret. I'm not, uh, I'm not dying. <laughs> and it, and it, will, it will heal. <laughs> Jesus did. <laughs> He's always with it. You know, stay on the winning side. Uh, I'm going to do something tonight, or shall I say attempt by the grace of God that I've never done before. I'm going to attempt to try to squeeze three chapters in, and so I know that I won't be able to cover them in their entirety. But we will be able to hopefully get a thumbnail sketch of each of it well enough where you can kind of put it all together. So we're going to do Revelation 16. Revelation 17 and Revelation 18. All right, so Revelation 16, of course, is the seven last plagues. All right, uh, the seven last plagues is God's response to the legislation of International Sunday Law, which eventually ends in the death decree and when the death decree comes out then God necessarily takes a stand for his people because we cannot stand for ourselves we don't have guns we're not into killing I'm not telling you you shouldn't own a gun and I'm not telling you you should own a gun I don't own one you don't have to do what I do But I, I'm, I just thought about Elijah no not Elijah, Elisha and Elisha had an army come after him. Y'all remember that story? <laughs> and the angels took care of the army. So, all right. Um, so, Revelation 17 um, deals with this this harlot organization that decides to make war with the saints. And, of course, it deals with the seven heads, the seven mountains, and we'll touch on that. And Revelation 18, <clears throat> starting in verse 5, deals with what happens as a result of the sixth plague. So when the sixth plague takes place, there is a worldwide financial fallout and all the banks fail because the people finally recognize that Babylon or whatever they call their religious organizations can't help them and they finally stop giving and that finally makes everything fall apart and so we, we have this whole scenario about nobody buying their merchandise anymore that's what that's all about so let's uh, take a moment pastor is this cup of water for me Okay, is it warm? Okay, see if you can get me one a little bit warmer than that. I appreciate you. Thank you. All right, so uh, let's uh, take a moment to pray. Let us kneel, and we'll go into the Word.
Father in heaven, we're thankful once again for this day, for the fact that we recognize that by your grace we can read the end of the book, and by reading the end of the book, we know that you have already won the battle. But we must now cooperate with thee so the battle can be won in us so that we can be victorious by your grace over self, sin, and Satan. We thank you for your love and your kindness, and we surrender ourselves to you anew and afresh. We ask that you would take our hearts and keep them pure for thee, because we recognize that we cannot keep them. In Jesus' name, let us all say together, Amen. 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 So tomorrow we will back up, and uh, is it 9 o'clock or is it 9.30, Pastor? Then I'll be speaking tomorrow. tomorrow 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock, okay, so at 9 tomorrow morning we're going to deal with, um, okay, 9.30, 9.30, we'll be, we'll be addressing Revelation 14. The three angels' message, of course, we're going we're gonna to start at verse 1, so we'll touch on 144,000. We already talked about 144,000. We'll touch on them again and go from verse 1 all the way down to 12, deal with the three angels' message. All right? Then at 2 o'clock, because we have another speaker that'll, that'll be here, and, and he'll do it at 11 o'clock. Then at 2 o'clock, we will go back again, and we will deal with Revelation chapter 12, the, the history of the church. All right? Everybody with me? All right, so let's let's look at Revelation 16. Would you go with me to Revelation chapter 15 and verse 8? Revelation chapter 15 and verse 8. Trusting that you have it. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. All right, so let's back up again. Go with me to um, Revelation chapter 11 in verse 19. Revelation 11 in verse 19. Everybody see it? And the scripture says, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. So before the, the chronology of the Bible gets us to Revelation 15 and verse 8, God's people have a view of the heavenly sanctuary and a work of Christ's intercession for them in his mediatorial work as the high priest to bring the people of God into a position where they can stand at the end of time without an intercessor. You with me? So what's history and prophecy brings us to that point, there will only be two groups on the planet. Holy Ghost field and demon possessed. Obedient and disobedient. Followers of Christ, followers of the adversary. So now is our opportunity to make a decision as to what group we plan to be in. Now, you must necessarily understand that there is a effort that is necessary for us to make in order to be retained in the group of the righteous. You with me? Because the adversary is not going to give up on us and just say, well, I'm going to let them go to heaven. They're, they're going to make it anyhow. No, he's not going to give up on us. So whatever your old sins have been, he would try to bring them back. 
whatever your old bad habits have been, He wants to bring them back. So the only way Satan makes tailor-made temptations for each one of us. The only way to keep him from fitting us with a temptation is to keep growing. Amen? Because if you're growing all the time, he makes one, he brings it to you. You put it on, boom, you just blow right out of it. Like the Hulk. Luferino, back in my days when I watched all that nonsense. I don't do it no more, thank you, Jesus. All right? So, it is, it is necessary that we, our closest friends, be individuals that are really spiritually motivated. You with me? Yes. All right. Now you can associate with anybody. Give give Bible studies to anybody, everybody, but don't hang out with them. Amen. You can help them. You know, you can share the word with them, but once you get finished sharing the word, get gone. Amen. You know, you can't sit down and watch the movies with them. You can't sit down and watch the football game with them. You know, you can't go to the to the barbecue and have just a little bit. You can't be around the coffee table in the morning at the office and just just get a sip. Cuz you cuz you're giving you you're giving a witness that you shouldn't be giving. So it should be obvious. I never forget Somebody asked me, because I've, I've done construction for many years and worked on some big, huge buildings. I was working on the 56th floor of the Bank of American building downtown in Charlotte, North Carolina. And we're putting trim up all around the building. And the guy said, man, come on, go to lunch with us. I never go to lunch with anybody. I, I eat lunch by myself and meditate. And, and he kept on and kept on. And, and so I finally went to lunch with him. So he said, hey, uh, you have a girlfriend? And I said, yeah, my wife. No, 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 that's not what I mean. I mean, you know, you know, somebody on the side. I say, yeah, my wife is on all sides. <laughs> he, just, he just couldn't get it. He just, you know, and he, and, and he got really upset. He, I don't believe you. I say, well, you know what? God's got the record. I don't have to prove nothing to you, and I never ate lunch with them again. So there, there, there comes a time where you have to cut, you know, certain, certain things. If we intend to be successful in this in this war, Amen. Amen. All right, so now let's look at these. Uh, so what happens before the plagues? Before I go into uh, chapter sixteen, is that the first, second, and third angel's message has sounded. The fourth angel of Revelation chapter eighteen, verses one to four, has sounded. That fourth angel of Revelation chapter eighteen, verses one to four, is essentially the outpouring of the latter rain. We are now, by God's grace, receiving the early rain. When we receive the abundance of the early rain without measure, then we are prepared to receive the latter rain. Because the early rain brings us all the way into the position of having continual, uninterrupted, unbroken victory over all sin. Did you get it? So it's the early rain that makes us grow all the way up into maturity in Christ. Any of y'all ever seen a wheat field? What does wheat look like when it's mature? What does it do? It bends over. That's right, brother. <laughs> That's right. It bends over. It bends over way over like that. And what does the weeds do? They stand straight up. <laughs> and they're still green. But the wheat is golden. Isn't that amazing? That's a biblical. That's a that's that's a biblical lesson right there in the field. Yes, it is. So 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 we have to be we have to be growing, so that we can be wheat, so that we can be cut down, and be crushed and made into bread. So, 
as all these things take place, then the end is very near. God's number is made up. And so God finally now tells the four angels to loose the winds of strife. Then the world is plunged into the seven last plagues. Why? Because they have made a law now around the world to compel the consciences of God's people. So that's why in ministry we can teach, we can preach, we can implore, we can even nudge a little bit, but we can't force. It's not our job to force you. You have to make a decision on your own in between you and Jesus as to what you're going to do with your life. But now, we're told, this is a hard statement now, we have any non adventist wills tonight? All of us, are, all of us, okay, no problem. We're told that if we preach the truth, the sinners in Zion will leave. That's not, our, we, that's not our desire for anybody to leave. But our desire is for people to grow up into the fullness of the stature of Christ. If you're a real preacher. Amen. If you're not a real preacher, then you don't care how people grow. You don't care if they grow straight or crooked. So, here's the plan. Revelation 16, verse 1, And I heard a voice out of the temple saying, Revelation chapter 16, verse 1, To the seven angels, Go your ways and pour your vials of wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. So the whole great controversy is all about worship. Who are you going to worship? If you know who you're going to worship and you surrender to the one that you are worshiping, the true and living God, then he will teach you how to worship. Amen. Worship is not black. Worship is not white. Worship is not pink. Worship is not yellow. Worship is worship. Amen? Amen. So too often that has come in among us and it has done very bad things. We need to get that out from among us. Amen? Because when the crisis comes and you're in a cave, you ain't going to be concerned about who's, who's black or white. You're gonna, just going to be glad that somebody be in there with you. Amen? Amen. <laughs> he said, oh, brother, you in here? Oh, praise the Lord. I got somebody to pray with. Yeah, that's where it's going to be. The mark of the beast. What is the mark of the beast, everybody? Very good. I'm glad y'all got it. Because if you had to say it Sunday, I was, I was going to give you an F. You know, too many people have made that mistake. They've gone out and told people that they were keeping Sunday and they, they had the mark of the beast. No, they don't. God's, God's going give to them, give them some time. They, 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 God's going to give them opportunity to see, to know, and to understand. And it's our job to help them understand with the love of Jesus. Mark of the beast. Which worshipped his image. What's the image? Okay, very, very good. I agree with that. But then somebody said in back, the union of church and state. You want to make it as simple as possible when you're studying with people. So it's the church controlling the state, the state working with the church. And, that's the, and so that's what's going to happen. All these churches that have gone against the law of God, they are now going to tell the government what to do. Don't you see that lining up? They're talking about it. They, they say, yeah, we can control the vote. Well, y'all go ahead. Y'all ain't controlling God. Verse 3, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man. Ooh. You know, God's going to have to do something to our lungs. If you're in 144,000, something special going to have to come to your lungs and your, your nostrils, because that's one terrible smell. I'll smell just the blood of one dead man. And that's a terrible smell. You don't want to smell that. 
That's what happens to people that's in war. They see all that blood and guts and gore. And that's why they have PTSD. God never intended for anybody to see that. And nothing less than the Holy Ghost can help them to come back out of that. All right? We came the blood of a dead man and of every, every, uh, let's see, uh, and every living soul died in the sea. My, my, my. I lived for almost five years right at the deepest portion of the sea, where it's seven miles deep. Mariana's Trench, that's right, Mariana's Islands. And you go out in the lagoon and you can walk all the way out to the reef. And it's about five feet all the way out. You go beyond the reef, it drops straight off and goes down to 200 feet. And then it shells off again and it drops again. It goes miles down into the sea. The water's warm over there up to the lagoon. And you get out there in the sea, that water, <laughs> you better have on some special suit because it'll chill, it'll chill you all the way to your bones. It's quite, it's quite amazing. That all the stuff that's in the sea, that God has put it in the sea, and all that is going to die in the plagues. Third angel, verse 4, poured his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, which was, and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. So before this time, before the close of probation on the whole planet, there will be a lot of us that will be put to death. People would die for their faith. But you don't have to worry. If you die, you're in good shape. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that's an interesting view. We'll we'll talk about that further. <laughs> After the meeting. Amen. Okay. All right. Um, and I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So you know what that means? That means that there's going to be something special with us. Because we're going to be exposed to the same sun. But we won't get scorched. What an amazing God. We're in Revelation chapter 16 and getting ready to go into verse, verse 9. We just did, we just did, uh, we just did 8. Vile upon the sun, power was given him to scorch men with fire. So you can imagine that, that the sun will feel, you know, I, I've been a carpenter for what, 36 years, and I wear, I wear suspenders to hold my nail bags up, you know, um, and, 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 and I wear cotton clothes. And at the end of summer, if I were to take my shirt off, you would see a big X in my back where the suspenders was on my back where the sun went right through the shirt and gave me a suntan everywhere else, but the suspenders was too thick for the rays of the sun to go through. Lines up here where that's still light, and every I mean, shoulders and everything else is dark where the sun went right through it. So it's it's a the sun is a wonderful thing, but when the Lord decides He's going to turn it up a little bit, it's not going to be a wonderful thing. Verse nine, and men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God. So can you imagine that that people are on the planet, they've not they've not repented, and they're looking up at the sky and they're cursing God. Yeah, one of my sons said that he thought that the Lord is warming the world up for the end. So, now whether or not that's true, <laughs> it's interesting. Which hath power over these plagues and repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. Where's the seat of the beast? Vatican City. 
That's right. So go with me back to uh, go with me back to Revelation chapter twelve and verse two. Revelation chapter twelve and verse two. Revelation chapter twelve and verse two. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Leopard doesn't change his spots, and his feet like a bear. That's the laws of Medes and the Persians. They don't; those laws don't change. And and a mouth as a mouth of a lion. That's 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 Babylon. That's that persecuting a mouth. And the dragon. That's that's Rome. So so the 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 Caesars gave Vatican City to the papacy. What did I? I didn't say the right chapter. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you. You know, you just have to raise your hand. Say, wait a minute, preacher. Just raise your hand. Uh, I, I, I'll make a mistake every now and then. All right, 13, verse 2. 13, verse 2. Revelation 13, verse 2. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat, his dwelling place, and great authority. So they passed it on. All right, go with me back to Revelation chapter 16. Back to Revelation chapter 16. Verse 10, And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. So remember, in Egypt, God sent a plague of darkness. And if you read about it in the pen of inspiration, it talks about how that the darkness was thick and was difficult for people to breathe. So imagine that. Remember, remember when they were at the Red Sea? And Jesus came down, whew, and it was light on the side of the children of Israel, and it was black dark on the other side. What a God. What an amazing God. And he, and he told, told Moses, he said, why are you crying to me? Stretch your rod out over the sea and tell your people to go forward. So they went out into the sea, and then he lifted the dark cloud, and then Pharaoh, you know, you know sin makes you insane. <laughs> if I had seen all of that, no way in the world I'm going down in that sea. I say, I'm leaving them people alone. But they went down there, and, then, and then, then Jesus started playing a game with them. He started pulling the wheels off the chariots. And they kept going. They're still driving the horses. They're still driving the horses. Crazy. So now, here we are, the seat of the beast. Darkness gnawed their tongue for pain. Verse 11, and blasphemed the God of heaven because their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. Yeah, that's right. They already gone on the other side now. They didn't, they didn't seal themselves in wickedness. Mm -hmm, that's right. They grieved it away. Verse 12. Verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. Is this physical? No, it's not physical. This is this is a symbolic. This is symbolism. Okay, so in ancient Babylon, what did the Euphrates do for ancient Babylon? That's right. It brought all their money in. It brought all the trade into the city. It was, they were brilliant to build a city like that. So notice it says. The great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up. What's the water? That's the people. So here we see the people, finally, it takes five plagues for them to get to the point for them to stop giving to Babylon. They finally wake up. When they, when they finally do wake up, we'll see what happens in just a minute. All right, so they finally wake up. Babylon is now broke. Babylon now goes bankrupt. And they're just, I mean, they're just beside themselves. That the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Who's this? Oh, but Pastor. You got to give them an opportunity to ask. <laughs> All right, write in, write in your notes. Um, Revelation chapter 7 and verse 2, Ezekiel 43 and verse 2, Daniel 11 and verse 44. 
put that in your notes because we, we won't have time to go through all those texts. But, but it's talking about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit coming out of the East. The kings of the East. Revelation chapter 7 and verse 2. Ezekiel 43 and verse 2. Daniel 11 and verse 44. So it comes out of the East. And, 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 yes, that's right. That's Matthew, that's Matthew 24 and verse 27. As the lightning cometh out of the east, even into the west, you know, even so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So, 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 you know, Jesus and and the heavenly host, they're they're preparing to come as the plagues, you know, and and the, and the angels are, are excited to come. Can you imagine Jesus got to hold them back? <laughs> and all those horses, they. <laughs> <laughs> And boy, when they start galloping across the sky, and we can hear it. They say, wait, we can hear them coming. <laughs> oh, boy, my, that's, my, that's my sanctified imagination. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Daniel 11 and verse 44. Daniel 11. In Daniel 11 verse 44, it says, Tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. All right, so why tidings out of the east? Because God is coming from the east. East. Why out of the north? On the north side of the sanctuary, what do you find? The table of shoe bread. So because they have been surrendered to eat the bread of heaven, now if you look at that uh, article of furniture very carefully, there is two crowns on it, one for the Father and for the Son. So they, they, they come, they say, you won't be hungry no more. Amen. We get ready to come. Amen. All right? So now, let's look at verse 13. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs. <laughs> Where I come from, people eat frogs. <laughs> yeah, where I come from, they eat frogs. They, they, they eat the frog legs. They eat, they eat catfish. You know, if you go further south, some of them eat gators. You know, <laughs> Thankful my mother and father had some sense. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Mm -hmm. We didn't eat none of that stuff. You know, we ate plenty of pork until we got the message. Once we got the message, we kicked that out too. Amen. You know, my my grandfather taught us the message, and coffee went, and and the, and the Coca Cola went, and 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 the pork went, and 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 then after a while, uh, the the meat with blood in it went, and and then after a while, all the meat went. <laughs> all right. Three unclean spirits, like frogs. How does a frog catch what it wants? With his tongue. Be careful who you listen to. Did you get it? Be careful who you listen to. Check my word. Don't just take it for granted. Go and study behind me. I'm not insulted. Because you're going to have to ask the God, not to me. So go and study. So three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, mouth, yes, speech, but mouth also represents the center of influence. Does God have a central government? Yes, he does. Does America have a central government? Is there anything wrong with a central government? If you, if, you, if you use it properly, it's a wonderful thing. But if it's not used properly, it's bad. So what we have today is centralization. Follow me carefully now. Vatican City is in the centralization. And too many other churches are in the centralization. And when you get into that centralization, then the people at the top start acting like popes. And that's bad. Amen? So the dragon is spiritualism. Spiritualism, paganism, atheism, atheism gave birth to communism Communism um, gives birth to, what's the word I'm looking for? And 
How's another one, Pastor? Uh, yeah, secularism, humanism, um, critical thinking, higher criticism. But he starts criticizing the scriptures. That's bad. So, uh, atheism gave rise to evolution. I'll never forget, I was talking with a little boy in California. A long time ago, I was here. And he said he believes in evolution. I said, you do? He said, yeah. I said, so you believe in the Big Bang? He said, yeah. I said, so uh, where did the bang come from? He said, matter. I said, well, where did the matter come from? He said, oh. <laughs> I said, there had to be a God, buddy. <laughs> matter just don't come into existence on its own. Right. See, this is, this, is, this is where faith comes in at. Because we cannot identify, never and never will be, the beginning of God. He doesn't have one. Don't ask me to explain that. I can't. You wait till you get to heaven and talk to Jesus, the angel, God the Father. They'll get it all ironed out for you. I can't. Amen? Amen. So, so theology has limits. And that's the problem with people is they want to go beyond Deuteronomy 29, 29. You know what that says, right? Turn to it. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Real quick. Nope. Deuteronomy 29, 29. That's right. The secret things belong unto the Lord. Uh-huh. That's right. So there's, there's certain things. And see, that, that was the adversary's problem. He wanted God to allow him into all of his secret counsels. He said, you're not no creator. You can't come in this meeting. It's kind of like mom and daddy having a meeting, and the kids want to come in. No. Some things, y'all just not ready for yet. You want to have a family meeting, that's different. That's everybody. But mom and daddy had their own meetings. You can't be in all those meetings. So don't feel bad. One day you'll be grown too. Amen. Then you get a chance to pay all the bills. <laughs> Fill all the pain. <laughs> get into the real world here, boy. Woo if I get back up and go back home, I would. <laughs> but you can't do nothing but go forward. That's all you can do. All right? The dragon. The beast, the papal power, the false prophet, Protestantism in the United States in its apostate form. So, for they, all of this now, go to verse 14, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth of the whole world to gather them in the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So all of them is going to be involved with all the armies and all the soldiers and all of their ability to track and all their ability to find and all their ability to kill they won't be able to kill. Have mercy. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine one of those? You know, they got a thing that looks almost, the, the body of it looks almost like a moose. But it doesn't have a head, but it's a computer and it's got legs. Have y'all seen that thing? And they mount Gatling guns on it. And you can't knock them down. But imagine one of those things come galloping up at you. And then all of a sudden it goes, ing, 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 ing. Or the bullets are fine, and the Gatling gun is going round and round, and you see the bullets going. You know it's a bad thing. Many of y'all probably never heard a bullet. I've lived in places where I heard bullets. It's not fun, especially when those bullets coming by your head. And you know how a bullet travels through space? It spins while it's going. So when you get hit, it just drills its way right through you. Man has made all these wicked inventions 
bullets that explode when they hit your skin. God never intended for us to be like that. But because man is so in love with dominance, your job, my job, is to dominate yourself. Amen, brothers. Yes, ma'am. Boy, that's a big question. <laughs> she said, at that time, will it only be the 144,000 living? Far as I know, the righteous. Far as I know. If somebody got some more light, they can give it to me, and then I'll surrender myself to the light. But you're going to have to give me a Bible study first. All right, so let's go, let's go forward. All right. Behold, I come as a thief, verse 15. Blessed he that watcheth, watcheth and keepeth his garments. What's your garments? That's right, your character. And so, that, so the righteousness of Christ covers you and covers me. But at that time, we will already be sealed, and so you'll be good. You understand, you understand how the sealing works. Once you get sealed... You are so close to God, you are so completely sold out to God, that you can't backslide, but you don't know it. Ain't that a good deal? You can't backslide. Because you have, you have so completely yielded yourself to Christ, you're not going back. But we got we to gotta labor by God's grace to get there. Amen? And he gathered them, verse 16, into the place in the Hebrew tongue called Armageddon. What's Armageddon? A battle in between who? Okay, if you're going to say Christ and Satan, Elder, you're going to have to explain. You're going to you're gonna have to make it a little bit open up. You're going to have to elucidate. Make it bigger. Okay, who's the good? Okay, the people. Because see, the devil can't reach Christ. He can reach the people. And so, and so, when Armageddon comes, it's the whole world against the righteous. You bring me another cup of water, brother? I'll take it. I appreciate you. <laughs> oh, I appreciate you. Yeah, so that's, so that's what's going to happen. All right, so now, um, let's go now to Revelation 17. We'll see if we can get back to verse 17. Let's go to Revelation 17. See if I can zip through some of this. There's no way in the world I'm going to get all of it, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do the best I can. I think i got about 30 minutes. All right. Verse seven, chapter 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, and I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So, so she rules the whole world. And so this is the problem, because the devil is ruling the whole world through this corrupt organization, and he would have complete control of the world if it wasn't for God's people. Otherwise, he would have won the great controversy. But we know he's not going to win. Amen. We're reading, the, we're reading the end of the story. This is the end of the story. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. They're involved in an illicit relationship. Because why is it called fornication? Because uh, the Bible likens the spiritual relationship as uh, marriage. And what is, what is marriage in God's eyesight as between the church and God, the church in Christ, it is the union of humanity with divinity. So fornication spiritually is the union of humanity with demons. So don't fool yourself for one minute. Playing around with sin is not good. You say, well, just, it's, it's just a little bit. Ain't no such thing. It's, it's, it's just... It's just it's just a little kiss. Ain't no such thing. Well, he just touched me one time. Slap his hands. I'm serious. We just we just have we 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 have we have made stuff small and it's not small. Because there are certain things that are reserved for certain certain experiences and certain relationships. And that kind of activity is reserved for the husband and the wife under the strictest terms of temperance, self-control, modesty, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, even in the bedroom. 
Amen, somebody. We got this thing going on now where people want to do anything that comes to your mind. Don't do that. And I'm not going no further. There's young years in here. But I think you understand. So teach the young men to be pure and teach the young women to be pure. There's no, 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 no dual standard. You caught, keep your hands to yourself. I don't care how, how warm you get in your heart. Amen. That's what you have to do if you want God's blessing. Amen. So when God starts talking about this, this adultery and fornication in the scriptures, it's very, very serious. The inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk through the wine of her fornication. How do you make wine? You've got to age it. It's got to age. So, 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 so this, this, this relationship has been around for a long time. So if we will go, go with me to, to Revelation 18. Let me go to the end of this so, I, so you can see something. Revelation 18. Revelation 18, verse 24. Revelation 18, verse 24. Everybody see it? Notice what it says. And in her, that's all about Babylon, was found the blood of prophets and saints and all that was slain upon the earth. Well, how is that? How could everybody that ever be died that ever died? How could God, you know, say that the, the, the blood, the guilt, is on Babylon? Because the spirit of Babylon got started in heaven. Lucifer started this thing, and so his first Babylonian was Cain. And everybody against God from then on was a Babylonian. And that's why they could kill without no problem. That's why Jezebel could kill. She didn't have no problem killing. And, then, and one of the founders of it, his name was Nimrod, and he was black, so we don't have nothing to be proud about, black people. Amen. Amen. He was an evil rascal. So if we look back in all our cultures, we find some mess. Amen. It's okay. None of us feel we better than others. We all on the same path trying to make it back to glory. Amen? All right, so let's go back where we were. All right, Revelation 17. Revelation 17. Revelation 17. He carried me away, verse 3, in the spirit into the wilderness, and, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. So this is the church sitting upon the, the political powers full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads, the seven heads, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, Rome, pagan, Rome, papal, France, that's organized atheism, the United States, that's number seven. And then when you go on, when you get down here, it says of the eighth, number eight is the revival of Romanism. And so the revival is taking place right now in America. The woman was arrayed in purple. And scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand for the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. People are all been out of shape now from all these churchyards where they're finding all these bones, all these babies that they digging up and all of these, all these Catholic basilicas. And people still supporting them. Y'all need to wake up. The system is bad. Not the people, the system. And upon her forehead was a name, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots. She didn't have no sons. Mother of harlots. Everything up under Rome has given itself to spiritual prostitution and the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. The, the, the people that have died under the hand of Rome registers in the millions. We don't have, we don't have the numbers. Just so, well, somebody said billions. And I, that's believable too. All right? So just so y'all know. You want to know how we black people got to America? Because the popes say to the European countries, here's the African continent and it needs to be made Christian. Go and make them slaves and then make them... What, a, what an interesting way to make Christians. 
And so some of us got dropped off in the West Indies, you know, some of us got dropped off in Jamaica, you know, and then, and then we came on down to South Carolina, Louisiana, and then we went all over the place, and then, then in Louisiana, you know, we, we held on to our drums, they got rid of our drums, and then we went from drums to stomping and foot clapping. And now it's in the church. It's going to go all over society. Louisiana, jazz, you know what the word jazz means? To ejaculate. Yep. People don't, people don't know. I mean, I got friends that's, that's still in it. And if, and if I talk to them about it, they get all bit out of shape. Because that's how they make their money. You go back and study your history. There was a time when they wouldn't let Mahalia Jackson in nobody's church. Is somebody hear the definition back there? Okay. Okay, pass it on to him. Yes, sir. There was a time that nobody wouldn't let her in a church. Somebody was hanging out with John Coltrane one night, and it, and, and it was on a Saturday night, and, they, and, and, and she said, well, I got to hear him get home because I got to go to church. And John Coltrane said to her, you already been to church. See, they, they, were, in the, they were in the worship with that music. What they were, that was, that's what they were into. It's J A Z Z, and then it comes from the word give. Go from give to. You got it, Pastor? A whole lot of gospel music is 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 is, is formed right after that. Okay, while we're on music, the basic uh, basic construct of music is melody, harmony, and rhythm. Melody first. Harmony next and rhythm last. Rhythm is always last. All right? So, if we were singing, Almighty Fortress is our God. Da, 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 da. Okay, so you got the, you got the melody. And that, and, that, and that repeats. All right? And it's easy for the mind to remember certain things uh, uh, with that. All right? But then when you get into other kinds of music, which I won't de demonstrate, then it makes it easier for the mind to pick that up too. Yeah. And then it goes to the lower nation. And that's why you in the you in the store, you know, and before you know it, your, your feet start. You start patting your feet. And you say, What happened? <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the rhythm. So rhythm is not bad, but rhythm must not be predominant. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Well even 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 there, if you go into him, you'll find some syncopation, but it's not dominant. All right, African music and Latin music is dominated. All right, you know some Indian music is dominated. I'm talking about American Indian, you know Eastern Indian, the water drum. Some of that is is dominant, and that's how people get into trances. That's how they, that, and then they start summoning up demons and, and, and all of that stuff. You know? So who was it? Prince came to Huntsville, Alabama. And there was some there was some young people in the audience. And he stopped and he said, There's some Seventh day Adventists in here? He said, Y'all get out of here. He said, Y'all not supposed to be in here. He said, Because I'm getting ready to praise my God now. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's out there. By the time Michael Jackson recognized what was going on, that's why they went after him. Because he was getting ready to expose them. He was getting ready to tell the whole world what the whole music world was about. Because if you want to go to top 40, you got to sign a contract with the devil. I can't say if he did or didn't. I guess he did. I don't know. I can't, I can't say. I never, I never saw no paperwork. But all I know was that he finally woke up. And he wanted out. And he went to war with them. And he went to war with them. And they went after him. You know. So if you if you listen to these late night shows, you'll hear these performers say some amazing stuff. Uh, uh, Shaka Khan said that the music industry is an industry that, that sucks the soul right out of people. You know. So that's what you have to do to, to be in there. You know. So let's move on. Let's get back to our study. Okay. A little commercial break. All right. Uh... Yeah, I'm going to skip some of this. Let's go down to verse 9. 
Verse 9, you see it? Revelation 17, verse 9. Here's the man which has with them the seven heads out of seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. We already talked about that. Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, Rome, pagan Rome, papal Rome, France, organized atheism, number seven, America, number eight, going right back to Rome. All right? So you got that. All right? Um, the ten horns, ten nations, eventually what will happen is those ten nations will see that they've been duped and they will go to war against the great whore. Go to, go to chapter 18. After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried, <clears throat> excuse me, mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Okay, so finally Babylon is now completely fallen. It's still fallen. But now it's finally completely fallen. Notice what it says. And it has become the habitation of devils. So devils in the church. And a hold of every foul uh, a foul spirit in a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. So what do you do with a cage? You trap things in it. So people are trapped in Babylon. And the only thing that can get them out is Christ. Do you represent him? Are you carrying Christ with you? Are you telling others about Christ? Are you, are, are you telling them what Christ can do? Are you telling them he can set you free? That you can be free from your, your religious prejudices? That's our job. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of, the, of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants, notice this now, notice this now, and the merchants are waxed rich through the abundance of her Delicacies. The word delicacy means luxury. Somebody got to build them pews. Somebody got to build those chandeliers. Somebody got to make those statues. Somebody got to make the clothes that goes on the statues. Somebody got to paint the statues. Somebody got to make the priest garments. Somebody got to make those Italian shoes that they wear. Somebody got to make the incense that they burn, and God told them don't bring, burn no incense because there ain't but one high priest, and he's in glory, and he don't need no, no incense no more. Amen. Somebody is in, involved in all of that, plus all the illegal stuff that they have said is okay for people to do. They say it's okay to drink, just don't be drunk. How many, how many men in ministry smoke? Yes, yeah, plenty of men in ministry to smoke. Smoke, drink, do drugs, go to the pulpit intoxicated under the influence of drugs. All kind of stuff. I ain't calling no names. I'm just putting it out there. But this is why you have to be careful where you go to church. You better be careful where you go to church. You better be careful. You better be careful who you who you who you gonna call your pastor. You better check it. You have the right to ask your pastor questions. You have the right to ask me questions. Pastor Pastor Cortez and I have been talking. He said as he said as pastors and elders. He said we don't have the right to be offended. Amen. Then you tell me that preacher. Amen. He said we don't have the right. Cause we're supposed to be an open book. Clear the view so everybody can see. Amen? For her sins have reached to heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she has rewarded you. Double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill her double. How she hath glorified herself. See, we are called to glorify God. But this church glorifies itself. The fallen church. The, 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 the papal church glorified herself and lived deliciously, lived in luxury. That's what caused the French Revolution. They were living in luxury and the people were living in poverty. I'm in uh, Revelation chapter 18 and verse 7 now. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 7. For she said in her heart, I said, 
a queen. So if she's a queen, then who is the king? That's right. <laughs> because they, because God's not in that. God's not with that. I said a queen and am no widow. In other words, my husband's not going to die. So they're actually thinking that the devil going to be eternal. Oh, no, he's not. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Your time running out, buddy. <laughs> I'm so glad. So much torment <clears throat> and sorrow give her. For she said that her heart, I said as a queen, and I'm no widow, so she no sorrow. For there shall, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death, mourning, famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously, lived in luxury. You know that when the people from over there in Saudi Arabia come to America to shop, you know that they, 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 they come with a whole jet, just a few of them, in a whole jet. And when they go to a hotel, they rent the whole hotel. Nobody can stay in it. They bring their own cooks and their own chefs. And people run around in poverty, and they live in like that. That's why it's so much poor. I mean, think about it. People in our country sit down and vote for a minimum wage. Who can live off a minimum wage? Unless you're living with your mom and daddy, you ain't living off no minimum wage. Might have to have three jobs. So when you going to sleep? God is very upset with, this, with, with what's going on on this planet. And he's soon going to finish it. We have to ask ourselves the question, am I holding up? what God wants to do. Am I moving so slow that God said, I got to wait on you because I'm giving you a little bit more time to get it right before I pull the plug on the whole planet. They live deliciously. They live in luxury with her and shall bewail her and lament her when they see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city of Babylon, the mighty city, for when in one hour thy judgment has come, and the merchants of the earth shall weep. This is, this is, this is, the, this is when the bottom falls out. There's, there's nobody buying anymore. None, you know, this, is, this, is, this is when the chaos comes on top side of the planet. This is when, this time, right now, it, during, the, during the sixth plague, going on into the seventh plague, this is the time when the people of the world finally finally wake up and start putting preachers to death. That's why I got to tell you. Because you're not coming to me with no gun talking about you knew. I'm telling you now. Get it right. Amen. Who's that preacher? He didn't tell you. I'm telling you. If you're a woman dressed like one. If you're a man dressed like one. Don't dress like no hooker. I was in one church and it was, it was so bad. I said to him, I said, well, there's a problem in here and it looks like some people are coming in here to sell something. And if somebody is selling something, we want to know who's buying because we're going to have them put out of the church. Amen. It's got to be that straight. Because you should not come to church and have your worship experience interrupted because you can see so much hips and so much thighs and so much legs. Amen. That too. And men, button your shirts up too. Don't be showing the hairs on your chest. That's for your wife and if you ain't married, then it ain't for nobody but Jesus. <laughs> and he ain't looking. He ain't. <laughs> and the description says, the Lord take not pleasure in the legs of man. <laughs> That's what the scriptures say. <laughs> Paying musicians to play music that belongs in a nightclub. Some of them will be if, they, if we just go ahead and tell them the truth. Give them an opportunity. I'm one of them converted musicians, sister. <laughs> 
I still, I still play trombone. I just don't own one. Pastor asked me, he said, well, what else do you play? I said, I said, play a trombone. He said, do you have one? I said, every time I go to get one, something else comes up. But my, but my, but my drums, I gave them up. I ain't, I ain't touching them no more. Mm-mm. I learned too much bad stuff. I ain't repeating that. Verse 11, And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Now notice this list of merchandise. The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet. Sound like what you ladies like to wear, right? Dying, good, good, sister. <laughs> Dying wood, uh, all manner of vessels of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood, brass, iron, marble, cinnamon, odors, uh, ointments, uh, perfumes, uh, colognes. You know, they got a cologne out, it's called Obsession. I wouldn't wear that. <laughs> I mean, it's a little something stuff out you Look at us. What, what, why y'all name it that? But y'all do know that they, they put this stuff in laboratories, right? Y'all do know that, right? And, they, and they, they, they take certain glands and certain fragrances from certain animals. And then they put fragrance with it. And then you smell it and you... you, you man, what, 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 what? You don't know why you're acting like that. Because it got in your nose. I mean, I walked by some people I went... I mean, it's okay. It's okay to smell good. But you shouldn't smell sexy. You smell like a flower, no problem. No problem. (laughs) Not a problem. But you start smelling like something else? Mm -mm -mm. No, don't do that. All right? Cinnamon, odors, frankincense, wine. Think about how much money is spent on alcohol in just America. The money that's spent on alcohol in America, we can solve the poverty problem. If you just had everybody say, stop spending your money on liquor and help the poor, they would come right out of the poverty hole. But they talking about, well, I got to get me a nip. <laughs> got to get a little toddy, a little toddy for the body. <laughs> and then they had a nerve to quote the scriptures, a little wine for the stomach. <laughs> Wasn't talking about that. It was talking about grape juice. Yes, ma'am. Proverbs twenty verse one says, "Mocker, strong drink is raging." Thereby, is why is not is not wise. So so now now think about this. I, I, I'm glad you quoted that text. Think about that. Wine wine being a mocker, strong drink is raging. We are studied about the wine of Babylon. Part of the wine of Babylon makes people rage in war. You got to carry it all the way over there. All right, now notice, we're still with this list. Wine, oil, Saudi Arabia, the oil industry. But that's, that, that's what people sell. That's, that's, this is, this is going to stop. People are not going to buy this stuff anymore. When the bottom falls out, fine flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses, chariots. Chariots back then, cars now. Slaves. All colors. Let me tell you something. How many of y'all like chocolate? You like chocolate? Let me see if I can bust your bubble. You know that most chocolate is made with slave wages? Most chocolate is produced by slave labor. Right out of the Ivory Coast in Zimbabwe. Yeah, the little kids. Their own people holding them in bondage. It's horrible. You have no idea. We were, we were, we were, we were, we were in Africa, and my, my wife was eating a sandwich... And, and, and sometimes she don't like the ends of the bread. And I said, don't, don't throw that away. He said, I don't, I, don't, I don't like it. She threw it away. And a little boy watched it. He watched it. And when it hit the ground, whoo, ah, he ate it. It was, it was, I mean, dust. That's what was on the ground. We have no idea. 
we are we are we are we are blessed. We are we are overfed and undernourished. Chariots, slaves, and the souls of men. People buy and sell souls. You want to go to the top of the modeling industry? Sign a contract. You want to go to the top of the music industry? Sign a contract. You want to go to the top in the entertainment industry, in acting? Sign a contract. And they'll get the Council of 13, highest ranking witches in the world, get together, bless what you do, and you're going to the top. There's only one person can get you out. His name is Jesus. Amen. Now they tell you you can't get out, but that's not true. You can get out. But if you get out, you don't have to walk, walk away from the money. They ain't, ain't going to let you... They ain't gonna let you. They ain't gonna let you take the money with you. And the fruits that are sold have lusted after and departed from thee. And the things that are dainty and goodly have departed from thee. And thou shalt find it no more at all. And the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, so the merchants were made rich by Vatican City. So you ain't gonna be able to boycott everything, but God does have a boycott. It's called a time of trouble. You won't build a buy and sell. <laughs> and then after that, God goes shut the whole thing down. <laughs> he said, all the money on this planet is mine. And he's going to say, I'm pulling the plug. Poop! <laughs> and it's going to be over. It will be happy because the angels will be coming to feed us. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine what the angel might bring to you? We don't have no idea. Yeah, yeah matter, but I mean, I mean, how many different ways can angels fix matter? We don't, we don't know. It's gonna be some. It's gonna be some good food. Well, I'm looking forward to it. You know, can I can I have my my amount of sunny side up? <laughs> can I have my amount in a sandwich? <laughs> can I have my amount in a salad? <laughs> you know, whatever. God will have it. He'll be right there for you. Saying, "Alas, alas, the great city was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones." For in one hour, so great riches has come to mark no, and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many have trade by the sea stood afar off, crying when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto the great city? And they cast dust on their heads, cried weeping and wailing, Alas, the great city were made rich, all that had ships. It was studied about the Titanic. Titanic was destined to sink. Well, you know what they said when they got ready to, when they got ready to launch off. They they said they said not even God can sink this ship. And so they were out there rolling. They were out there rolling. They had that thing cranked up, and it was just they, they were just happy. It just whoosh. It was just it just going through. It just, whoosh. It was just going. And they started getting messages. Icebergs. Icebergs. You know, go to the south. Slow down. Every time they got a message, you balled it up, threw it on the floor. He was he was paid to wreck it. He was paid to wreck it. When the thing hit the iceberg, cut the ship open just like a can opener. Got all the compartments that would hold the water, water was gonna get in practically all of the compartments, so it wouldn't do them no good. So one of the guys, one of the builders, went down and looked in the hole, and he said, "How long for the ship go down?" He did a little bit of math. He said, "You got two hours." So what ship are you on? You on an unsinkable ship? Or are you on a ship that already sunk? You on a ship with the right captain? Or are you on a ship with another captain? My captain is Jesus. And I'm getting a big rope. And I'm tying it around Jesus and around me. <laughs> So when the waves get rough, all I do is just bump into Jesus. Because <laughs> it's going to get rough. <laughs> you know, and Jesus ain't even phased. He just full steam ahead. All hands on deck. <laughs> and ship, My daddy was a sailor. He was a merchant seaman. He told me some amazing stories about what it takes to stay alive at sea. Saints, we're at sea. We're on troubled waters. And 
they shooting torpedoes at our boat right now. Don't you hear them hitting? Boom, 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 boom. But the boat ain't going down. This boat can't be penetrated. Because this is Jesus' boat. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you penetrate Jesus' boat, it still won't sink. <laughs> you just tell the steel, go back together. <laughs> Close right back up. Let's finish this. It's an interesting study, isn't it? Notice this now. Verse 20. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and holy apostles. For God hath avenged you on her, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Now watch this, now watch this. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. No craftsman whatsoever's craft be shall be found no more at all in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of the candle. Oh, high in their services, they got all these candles. All these candles. You know, people in spiritualism, they got to they gotta burn a candle to keep demons out. They got to burn, burn a candle to keep the finances right. They got to ba- ba- burn a candle to get the love life right. They got to they gotta burn a candle, you know, so they won't have bad luck. They gotta... Why don't you just catch on fire for Jesus and you be the candle? <laughs> Light of the candle shall sign no more at all in the voice of the bridegroom, and the voice of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Now follow this now, follow this. Watch at the end of this text. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. The word sorcery comes from the Greek word pharmakos, from which we get the word pharmacy, which means one who enchants and poisons with drug medication. Now, don't run out of here and throw your medicines away. Because you end up being sick tomorrow. But some of you that's on medicine, you need to look around, find you a good doctor, that he can help you get off your medicine. Because when the crisis comes, how are you going to get your medicine? So now, watch this. The same people that make legal drugs make illegal drugs. Sir, that's what we need. By thy sorceries were all nations deceived. All nations. All nations. All nations. Vietnam had some of the biggest heroin transported in the coffins of people back to America that ever was. I won't even get into all that. It's just, it's just, it's horrible. And it always ends up in poor communities. So they can wipe those communities out. Verse 24, for in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. We read this already. And all that was slain upon the earth. Time is up. I'm going to stop right now. Um, maybe tomorrow morning I can touch on Revelation 16, 7, verses 17 all the way down to, to the end. All right? So, saints, the battle is raging. It's going to get worse and worse and hotter and hotter. You need to put on your armor. Keep your armor on. Keep your sword in your hand and your shield up over your body. Because we have we are fighting against the chief of demons, and he's got at least six thousand years of practice. But guess what? If you stay with Jesus, he can't beat you. But if you step outside of Jesus, he'll cut your legs off. So we need to encourage one another. We need to pray for one another. We need to urge one another in righteousness. Because this great controversy that we find ourselves 
right in the middle of is soon going to end. What side will you be on? So maybe there are some here today, this evening, that have never made a commitment to follow Jesus. And if you're here tonight, I would ask for you to raise your hand wherever you are. Somebody here that has never made a commitment to follow Jesus. You might be young. You might be old. You might be in between. Anybody. Maybe you are in the number that you have made a commitment to follow Jesus, but you've never been baptized. Are you here tonight? Would you raise your hand? Maybe you need to be recommitted to Christ. You have seen some backsliding in your life and you want to correct that. Would you raise your hand? Everybody's ready for glory then. Amen. Amen. Let's look to the Lord as we pray in closing. Let us kneel. Father in heaven, we're thankful once again for this day. Thankful, Lord, that the battle is already won. You have already won. But Lord, now we must make sure that we stay on the winning side. Give us your grace. Watch over us as we go home. Give us safe travel. Bring us back, to get, bring us back again tomorrow morning. And bless us, Lord, that we'll bring somebody with us. In Jesus' name, let us all say together.